Hey guys, what's up? It's TMG or that Madden Gamer, wherever you know me as. Back at again with another video. Today we're here today with a um. No, this is not a podcast mock draft edition. This is a just straight up Detroit Lions seven round mock draft. It might go longer, um, or it might go shorter. I'm not really restraining myself to the ten, the, you know, to the anywhere between eight to twelve minutes. I usually put myself on a podcast. This is just gonna be me describing every single draft process, what I like, what I don't like talk about every single pick here my last mock draft i felt very good about except for probably this is the first maybe second round picks first and second round picks were kind of the ones that i would definitely would have changed i like my later picks a lot but i've changed this mock draft a lot so i want to see you guys think about it down below this is what i think is the most realistic one but um we'll see i mean it just kind of depends so we're gonna sit here today boys we're gonna talk about the detroit lions here if you guys haven't yet be sure to subscribe you know if you like the detroit lions Doing some Madden content with the Lions as well, a new Ultimate Team theme team series. But, um, you know, let's get right into the video, guys. Very excited for this one. Let me know what you guys think down below. In my last video, I did a basically a Detroit Lions big board heading into the NFL draft at pick number seven. So, this first round pick will kind of follow the same theme we went through there. And, um, let's just jump right into it, guys. If you see that video, you, you know that I said that my targets to the Detroit Lions in terms of value would be in this order Jamar Chase, Panay Sewell. Those guys are kind of interchangeable, honestly. It just depends how you value, what position you value of higher need. I would personally put receivers at bigger need than offensive line, but those are just like two high value guys. It's Chase and Sewell, or Sewell Chase in that order. Then it's probably Rashawn Slater. Then it's probably Rashawn Slater. Then I think Micah Parsons, Patrick Sertan, Justin Fields. I don't know if it's in that exact order, but those are a couple of guys that threw in there. Sertan's kind of a wild card pick there because I don't expect him to go corner in the first round at all. I could see them going corner like the later rounds though, for sure. But um, I think the picks there will probably be either a playmaker. I say Pitts, a Chase, a Waddle, um, Sewell or Slater as an offensive lineman, or Parsons as a linebacker, um, or, or a trade out. This mock draft has no trade outs, just so you guys know. Um, no trade outs here. I seen someone in the last video said if you if they could trade out, this would be even better. No trade outs in these mock drafts. It'd just be too complicated. So we're gonna go right here, round one, pick number seven. I'm having them take Panay Sewell. Offensive lineman from Oregon. I say offensive lineman because he doesn't have to play offensive tackle, man. This guy played left tackle in college at a pretty high level. There's some technical things I think he could definitely polish up. But with the right offensive line coach, I think he'll be just fine. Um, pass protection mainly. Run run game, this guy's a mauler. I don't see very many issues at all. Balance, just absolute run mauler. I mean, he, just, he fits into blocks well. He runs through smart players well. Um, I see pass protection. I see some inconsistencies with his feet. He likes to lean sometimes. Um... Still a very good offensive line prospect, probably the best one in this draft, but Rashawn Slater's like right behind him. So if Rashawn Slater's here and Sewell isn't, I would not take, I, w I would take Rashawn Slater I'm trying to say, I wouldn't have any heartburn with it. But um, Sewell, you pause this man, you have yourself a plug and play left tackle or right tackle starter, depending on which one you see is your bigger need. I'm going to guess they're probably going to play him at right tackle if they drafted him, unless they think how Vitae can play right tackle and they'll probably play right guard right away because Joe Dahl's gone. Um, Terrell Crosby will probably be related to the, you know, the, the, the you know the odd guy out there probably more of a swing tackle, but um Crosby was very serviceable last year. Uh, Valentine was serviceable at guard, not really tackle. So I'd say he probably he has been trained to play right tackle. So I could definitely see that if the Bengals take like a Kyle Pitts or a Jamar Chase at, at uh, pick number six or five five pick number five. <laughs> uh, Penny Sewell could definitely be right there for the Lions. And if you're the Lions, you cannot pass up on this guy. I'm not buying into the generational prospect. I'm not at all. Um, generational prospects are very special, and he's a good offensive lineman, but he's not a generational offensive lineman. Um, pick seven, though, good pick for lines, plug and play, day one, right tackle, right guard kind of player. He can play left guard as well, I guess. He can play guard tackle. He's going to be a good one, either one of those positions. And if he's not a stud tackle, I truly believe he'll be an all-pro caliber guard. All right, next pick. Sorry, I rambled on a little bit there. Round two, pick 41, we got Terrace Marshall, receiver from LSU. Big guy, big catch radius. Um, runs solid routes. He's fast. I just a guy who was really overshadowed by Justin Jefferson and Jamar Chase at LSU. And last year, you saw him eat. He had a good season. I watched some film on him when I first started making these mock drafts. I thought this guy I liked in the second, late, you know, late first, early second round kind of player. I thought the Lions could snag him in the second round. Um, that's what I'm doing right here. He's a stud. Um, one thing I do see a little bit, I do see some body catching issues. Um, which I think are definitely correctable. I mean, he's got strong hands. You've seen him go up a high point the ball. He's a good player, man. He's a great player. The one biggest con I see from him, I say that there is some body catching issues. Maybe it's just me. Maybe I'm nitpicking him. I probably am because he's a good prospect. But I see some 
body catching issues. He runs good routes. He's a he's he's not only he's a true separator, but he's a big guy. I think he's six three six excuse me six three something like that. Bigger guy, good catch radius. Goes up and gets the ball. Great the ball in the center of contact. Great player. If you get him in the second round, it's a great value pick. Round three, pick seventy two. We got Richie Grant, the safety from UCF, a guy who can do a little bit of everything. He can play in the box. He can play over the top. Um, I think the Lions are probably when they draft him, he's more of a Swiss Army knife kind of player. I think they'd probably use Tracy Walker as more of a strong safety and let Tracy Walker play up in the box some more, and, or Will Harris. It just kind of depends here. I think Richie Grant is more of a true over-the-top kind of safety. He makes a lot of plays, and, um, yeah, you, you watch the film, you turn the tape on, man, he makes a lot of good plays. In, even as a tackler, as a pass cover guy, I like Rich, uh, Richie Grant a lot. Um, he's a guy I've become kind of high on as of late. I, first, I saw him at the Senior Bowl, and I liked what he did at the Senior Bowl. And he can play some nickel corner as well. So he has that versatility factor for him, man. And I just like the pick in this rebuilding defense to add a secondary weapon. A guy that can play some nickel corner if you need him to be as a rookie. District nickel corner, third round pick. Rotates in as a safety, starts to develop more true safety. Um, but I think he can play about anywhere. I don't know if he's a true strong safety or not, but he's probably more of a free safety in our defense. Just depends on what our defensive scheme requires. But I think he's more of an NFL uh, free safety, not a strong safety so much. I think Tracy Walker has the body to be more of a strong safety if you really wanted to be. Um, he kind of used him all over the board, though. So I think last year was more of a strong safety, but um, don't quote me on that. <laughs> so Richie Grant, developmental safety. If Tracy Walker isn't your guy, whether you plan on playing him at free safety or strong safety, wherever, uh, Richie Grant can play wherever, man. I, I like him a lot as more of a free safety kind of guy, replacing Tracy Walker or just playing alongside of him. Um, round three, pick 101, we got Chaz Surratt, linebacker from UNC. I had to go linebacker at least once in this draft because linebacker is too big of a need to pass up. Guy was a quarterback at UNC and actually wasn't absolutely terrible. Was more of an athlete than a quarterback in my opinion. But dude, this guy's an athletic monster. Big, long, a little bit more raw, can cover though. I mean, I see him and I see a guy like Jabril Cox. And I don't see that much of a down, uh, that much of a downgrade when you draft this guy. I think Jabril Cox will go in the second round, early third round. But um, I honestly don't see much of a downgrade here. I think he's more raw to position, but I just think that he's a very, very versatile and talented player. Guys, just crazy athlete, gets to the quarterback and pass rushing downs, can cover very well. I don't know if he's your true NFL thumper, but you, the NFL is evolving away from the thumper linebacker. You, he, they're evolving into more of a sideline to sideline impact playmaker. Put some weight on this. I think he's 230. I think he's like high 230s. Add some weight to this dude's bones in the NFL nutrition system and weight room. I mean, this guy's going to be, I think this guy could be great. I really do. With the right coaching, this guy could be great. Round four, pick 112, we got Sean Wade Corner from LSU. And LSU, OSU, my bad, Ohio State University. Sean Wade is extremely, just got dumped on after he struggled to cover. Dude, he was kind of terrible on the outside. I don't know how to say it. Devontae Smith made him look stupid in the national championship. Um, just kind of bad on the outside, man. Not, not an outside corner. In the slot, though, people ignore how good he was in the slot at Ohio State. Um, in the fourth round, I mean, a guy that could has the upside to have been a first-round caliber player like a year or two ago. Was it last year he could have declared that people thought he'd be like a first round corner? Yeah, um, I I'll take it in the fourth round. His I think he could go before this. I really do. But the way his stocks, I've been looking at a lot of different big boards and people have him low, man. So if you could get Sean Wade in the fourth round, just an excellent value pick, like getting like a mid third round kind of guy in the fourth round, great value pick in my opinion. Can start in the, I, I don't know if he's a day one starter in the slot by any means. Get that get him back with Jeff Okuda, Ohio State reunited there. On that defense, but man, is is a developmental slot guy. Justin Coleman's gone. They need this true slot corner. He's a true slot corner. So you got Okuda playing outside, or you Warrior playing the other side. You have uh, who else they bring in? Brashad Breland, I believe is who else they brought in. I just remember the other day we were playing for his card in Madden. <laughs> but um, yeah, they brought him in from Seattle, and he was very he's very solid as well. I mean, I just I think that adding Sean Wade here. As a young slot corner, even if he doesn't start day one, you kind of find your Armani Oriwari, a guy who slips a little bit, but a guy who's kind of a diamond in the rough. Who's been a, Armani Oriwari has been a very serviceable starter for us on the outside, and I think you get the same kind of thing with Sean Wade, a guy who slips a little bit due to some uh, things that really aren't in his control. He's not an outside corner. He's not. He's a slot corner. I think once you put him in the slot, you'll see he's actually a very, a very serviceable player. And um, I could see in the fourth round here if he's sitting there, the Lions have to swoop him up, man. I guess if you take Richie Grant, maybe you don't feel the need to go with like a slot corner and nickel corner as much. But this guy's a pure slot corner, every sense of the word. I like the pick here. Round five, pick 153. Amari Rogers, wide receiver from Clemson. This is the same pick as last video. Um, 
it comes down to this guy, I just like, I've heard of him. I've heard of him and Cornell Powell through the draft process. And then when you get to the senior bowl, this guy impressed me. Ran great routes, good hands, good blocker even. And I just was very impressed with him at the senior bowl. One-on-ones, stacked stack corners up. And I think he's definitely, he's not an outside receiver in the NFL, I don't think. But he's definitely a good enough college outside receiver. He runs good enough routes. I think he's on like I think he's like five ten, so he's more like I said more of a slot receiver. Um, but you throw him into that receiver room now. You have Tyrell Williams, you have Quinn Cephas, you'll have Terrace Marshall, you'll have him. That's a that's a young receiver room. That's a receiver room I'd actually like to have, and I think that could be very serviceable. I think Amari Rogers. A lot of these picks come down to value, and I think Amari Rogers in the fifth round is a guy who's a developmental high upside slot receiver, and I I genuinely think that. So I love that pick there. I go through here. Sewell, great value pick. Marshall, great value pick. Richie Grant, great value pick. Saz Surratt, great value pick. Chaz Surratt, I mean, not Saj. Uh, Sean Wade, and all these guys are just great value. Great value picks here. And these all are very realistic as well. I know people are like, well, you're calling all these guys value picks. That means like you're getting lucky to have them. I think they're all realistic picks. Sewell is probably the most far-fetched one, I'd say, because I don't know if the Bengals will actually pass on him. I could see it happening, though, because the Bengals don't need necessarily an offensive tackle. They have Riley Reef, who's okay. Um, they have uh, the guy that drafted a couple years ago out of Bama. Jonah Williams at left tackle is serviceable as well. And that offensive line was banged up last year, but if they all come back healthy, I mean, unless they draft school to play guard and transition over to right tackle, I could definitely see that happening. But I could see getting Joe Burrow a great pass catcher because there's a lot of guards you can take in this draft later on. A lot of good guards. So I, if they pass on Sewell... I wouldn't be 100% surprised, and if you're Detroit, him or Slater, in my opinion, has to be the pick if Jamar Chase or Kyle Pitts is on the board. Um, I like Micah Parsons a lot. I just don't know if he's a top 10 player in the draft. Um, I wouldn't even be heartbroken with Jalen Waddle as much as I wouldn't be crazy about it. But Yeah, guys, this is my mock draft. Let me know what you think down below in the comments. Go back through. you got Sewell in the first round, Marshall in the second round, Grant, Richie Grant in the third round, Chas Surratt, other pick in the third round, Fourth round, you got Sean Wade. In fifth round, you got Amari Rogers. All guys who I genuinely think could be in you know two, three years down the road, all be starting on the team. <laughs> it's my, that's my, that's why I love this so much. Um, I don't know if I love it as much my last mock draft though. I think my last mock draft, you switch out the Fields pick with the uh, Sewell pick and maybe like the um, the Trey Smith pick with the Sean Wade pick, and I think you're looking at a, like a pretty much perfect mock draft. Might be like the dream scenario. But um, I don't think it's much better than this, guys. You get a very good tackle, guard player. You get a very good receiver, up number one upside. Uh, good safety, Richie Grant. A day one linebacker, and Chaz Surratt. A de- upside developmental slot corner. And a, you know, developmental upside slot receiver. So, guys, let me know what you think down below in the comments. Thank you so much for listening, watching, whatever you're doing this video. And I will see you guys after the draft, where I'll be reacting to the Detroit Lions draft grades. And I'll probably do a first-round reaction as well. So, guys, stay tuned for that. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.